Welcome, everyone. My name is Vishna zaborski Breton, and by way of introduction, I am the Director of Communications with the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association. I'd like to welcome you to today's CPRA webinar on Parks for All, Let's Act to Ignite a Vision for Canada's Network of Parks from Local Community to National Parks. There has been a great deal of interest in today's topic, and as such, we have participants uh, joining us from across Canada. Thank you for spending your lunch hour with us, or in the case of our friends out west, your morning coffee. Uh, welcome. We appreciate your time, and we're looking forward to an excellent session today. For those of you who may not be aware, the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association, or CPRA, is a national organization dedicated to realizing the full potential of parks and recreation as a major contributor to community health and vibrancy. CPRA is the national voice for parks and recreation in Canada. Our members are the 13 provincial and territorial parks and recreation associations and their extensive networks of service providers in over 90% of Canadian communities. CPRA hosts webinars throughout the year which provide tools, resources, and best practices for parks and recreation practitioners in Canada. Topics have included supporting wellness in recreation through healthy food environments, the framework for recreation in Canada, the CPRA professional development certification, and many more. For a listing of our past webinars and to learn about upcoming presentations, I encourage you to visit our website, www.cpra.ca, and to follow CPRA on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Before we get started, I just want to go over a couple housekeeping notes for our participants. As you may have heard, today's webinar will be recorded and posted on the CPRA website for future reference. So perhaps if you had colleagues who were unable to join us today, the session will be um, accessible, and they can view it at their leisure. We will send a notice to everyone who registered once the recording is available, and we will post it to the CPRA website as well as our social media platforms. During today's presentation, there will be opportunities for you to participate in the discussion through polls that will pop up on your screen. We will also have some time for a Q&A session following the presentation. You'll find a chat box at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, and feel free to type in a question, and the presenters will have an opportunity to answer your questions at the end. We will also ask you to help us out with a few evaluation questions following the presentation. I would like to thank the Leisure Information Network for providing us with technical support on today's call, and should we need any assistance, Chris McCreary is on the call with us. Thanks for all your help, Chris. I'd now like to introduce our presenters today. Murray Kopp is the chair of the CPRA Parks Task Group. When Murray is not volunteering his time with CPRA, he is the director of the Parks Services Department at the Regional District of Central Okanagan. Murray has provided leadership in the Canadian park sector for over the last 20 years through his professional efforts and volunteer roles with the British Columbia Recreation and Parks Association, and across Canada through his time with CPRA. Don Carr is the Executive Director of the Canadian Parks Council. Since 2012, Don has provided professional advice and services to the directors and senior executives of Canada's provincial, territorial, and federal park agencies as their Executive Director. Through her leadership, Don has restored a pan-Canadian commitment to the Council while enhancing operations and implementing initiatives designed to enhance the role of parks in the health and well-being of Canadians. And with that, I would like to turn things over to our, the co-chairs for the Parks for All initiative, Murray and Don. Over to you, Murray. Super. Thanks so much, Vijna. I very much appreciate the introduction, and uh, good afternoon to uh, our participants in the um, Atlantic and central parts of Canada, and uh, good morning and uh, welcome to the webinar for everybody that's uh, west of uh, Ontario. Uh, 
as you indicated, Vishna, uh, Dawn and I are really, really excited to uh, have an opportunity to share some of the information uh, that we've been uh, assembling and working in partnership with uh, uh, many, many people over the last three years uh, on the Parks for All initiative. And so I'm very pleased that uh, we've got uh, such a, a diverse group of participants from across Canada that are interested in, in, in this project. Uh, as you indicated, Vishna, Dawn and I will be presenting this um, information in tandem. So uh, Dawn and I will switch off through the course of this webinar. And uh, as Vishna indicated to everybody on the call and uh, participating in the webinar, you're welcome to uh, submit questions via the chat box and we'll try to assemble and provide responses back to you at the conclusion of today's presentation. And we are going to make today's presentation interactive. So uh, as indicated by Vision at the outset, uh, we will be posting a series of questions um, uh, that we'd appreciate your responses to. And um, so we'll get kicked off here by um, well, initially I'll describe to you that the Parks for All uh, initiative has been a project that's been underway for, as I said, over three years. And uh, my colleague and my partner in this project, Dawn Carr from the Canadian Parks Council, has just done an outstanding job in terms of her leadership and her work on uh, moving this project forward for uh, her community of uh, constituents amongst the CPC, which is Federal, Provincial, and Territorial Ministries responsible for parks as well as working for national NGO organizations and representing those NGOs uh, uh, through her work in the CPC. Um, my role as the uh, chair of the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association's Parks Task Group has been to try and uh, make that connection between our federal, provincial, and territorial and NGO communities in parks across Canada with our local community park systems, our municipal park systems across the nation. And uh, Dawn and I are really, really excited that the Parks for All initiative is uh, trying to develop a vision on how we can uh, collaborate, we can better work together, and uh, we can develop a, a roadmap looking forward as we uh, develop our fabulous system of parks across Canada. Um, I'm just going to move ahead to the next slide. Just a, a bit of information in terms of what brought our two organizations together. Uh, the Canadian Parks Council, as indicated at the outset, is, is a fantastic organization that's been in place since 1962. The organization represents federal, provincial, and territorial parks uh, uh, ministries and parks practitioners across the nation. And uh, they have been working diligently for five plus decades uh, across the nation in terms of advancing uh, park and protected area values. and developing collaboration opportunities amongst our FET partners across the nation. As many of you, I think, on the call appreciate, the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association as well um, has been in existence uh, for many, many decades and equally has been an advocate for parks and recreation activities across the nation, as Vishnu indicated. Uh, a wonderful opportunity occurred in the years 2014 and 2015 in which the Canadian Parks Council had developed uh, a document which is on the screen before you called Connecting Canadians with Nature. Uh, that document and that framework document uh, outlines uh, a vision for uh, FET uh, organizations across the country to encourage Canadians to embrace the wonderful assets that we've got called parks. And along that same pathway, as many of you who are members of the CPRA may know, uh, the CPRA was working on a framework for recreation in Canada as well. And in both cases, um, both the Connecting Canadians with Nature document as well as the Framework for Recreation in Canada document were endorsed by uh, respective ministers responsible for either parks in Canada or for sport and recreation initiatives. In the case of CPC, in February 2014, Connecting Canadians to Nature was uh, supported by ministers responsible for parks. And again, at the Canada Winter Games in February 2015, ministers responsible for sport recreation also uh, supported the framework for recreation in Canada in 2015. The combination of these two initiatives uh, led both uh, the CPC and the CPRA to uh, start to collaborate with more earnest uh, effort, uh, in particular because the framework for recreation in Canada in 2015 document identified as one of its key goals that, uh, that we want to connect uh, and help people connect to nature through recreation. So goal number three of the 
framework for recreation is to do exactly what I believe the framework and the Connecting Canadians to Nature document uh, produced by CPC describes. So that led to a partnership between the CPC and the CPRA and brought us together to try and advance how we can collaborate and better work towards achieving our objectives of connecting ourselves better to nature and parks. The, as you can all appreciate, I'm sure, that on the call, uh, what I've described to you is uh, that, that Canada has an absolutely outstanding system of parks across the nation that's been in place for centuries now. And, uh, and that uh, age-old system of parks not only includes our wonderful federal national parks, but it also includes our many, many community parks that are scattered across the nation in local communities from coast to coast to coast. And uh, there are many, many things that we have discovered that we have in common as we start to evolve and start to look towards uh, how we can better collaborate on getting our Canadian citizens involved in park systems across Canada. Many shared interests have been discovered in our conversations, both in Connecting Canadians to Nature as well as the Framework for Recreation document. And through that work, the CPC and the CPRA are now embarking on an effort to try and develop a roadmap, a framework, a strategic direction looking forward as how we can best develop our broader system of Canadian parks across the nation. Dawn, I'll turn the slides over to you. Thank you, Murray. And um, it's just really great to be here. And I also want to throw some kudos your way, Murray. You've been uh, such a pleasure to work with throughout this whole process. and really appreciate the CPRA hosting this webinar on behalf of uh, our collaborative work together. Um, this has been a really fabulous relationship and, and I think you've kicked off our webinar great, Murray, in terms of uh, the passion both you and I share toward this whole idea of uniting um, our parks community from coast to coast to coast and from local communities up through our national and most remote places in Canada. Uh, so. In addition to what Murray had explained uh, related to initiatives that had been underway with the CPC and CPRA, uh, internationally there is also um, a whole network and movement towards connecting people with nature and how that parks community relates to that whole um, objective. So the parks, um, the global parks and protected areas community has embraced the shared interest that Canada is recognizing through the establishment of a new program component of the IUCN. Uh, the IUCN is the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. And the IUCN has named a new program stream called Nature for All. This has been under development for uh, a few years now and it's really taking off. It was launched last September at the World Conservation Congress. Uh, and I would encourage everyone on on the call and webinar today who's listening to visit the Na Nature for All uh, website if you just type that in Google. Um, it's natureforallglobal.org uh, and you can read about that initiative. Um, I'm just underscoring this because at the core of Nature for All is a really simple idea. Um, and the idea is that the more people experience, connect with, and benefit from nature, the more support there will be for its conservation. Uh, and you know, this Parks for All work that we are undertaking is really embracing that entire tenant and that is what we're working toward. So um, all of our work, just to make it even more relevant, is what we're doing in Canada is very unique. Uh, we've taken a look globally and there's no such initiative similar to Parks for All taking place anywhere in the world. So in many ways, we're um, very much a leader in this and others are taking a look at what we're doing through our work collaboratively to see how it can be implemented elsewhere as well. So that's an exciting, an exciting piece to this whole story. Sorry, I'm just working to advance the slide. Here we go. Okay, so this slide here um, is shows the picture of, of the community that I live in from day to day in my, in my day job here. Um, the CPC community, its uh, members are the 14 jurisdictions, provincial, uh, territorial, and national. Um, and together they currently represent about 10.6% of Canada's uh, fresh uh, or land and fresh water. These parks and protected areas that you see um, 
Along with others managed by different entities, they provide powerful benefits that are vital to our culture, our heritage, our economy, and our future. Uh, just to highlight a little bit of this story, Canada's forests, wetlands, prairies, and tundra, and our oceans, they provide essential ecosystem services of global importance, uh, which I'm sure is no surprise to people who are listening. And approximately 30% of the world's boreal forest, 20% of our world's freshwater resources, the world's longest coastline, and one of the world's largest marine territories are ours to enjoy, protect, and share. So the parks and protected areas managed by CPC agencies, they're varied and far-reaching. And while the vast majority of us will never get to experience these places firsthand, just given how remote they are and um, challenges that we have in terms of access, and these some places are just very special um, that are le better left as they are, they, um, they do represent Canada's bi biodiversity and our incredible landscapes, and they're in, they really are um, part of the definition of our collective identity. So in order to conserve these places today and in the future, we need to grow the network by collaborating with others to share the messages of these, of these places and to understand the value to our health and well-being. So by collaborating across borders and jurisdictions and really perceived silos that we've had, uh, we will be in a much stronger place to share the incredible benefits that parks and protected areas provide. What struck me when Marie and I started working together a couple of years ago, um, and we just had some really candid conversations, this map here, um, in comparison to the map that I just showed you, it identifies where Canadians live. Uh, in the work that we had done in the past, we now know that more than 80% of Canadians live in urban centres. And what's so incredible about the CPRA is that it does include the 13 provincial and territorial parks and recreation associations. But Vishnu highlighted this at the opening of the webinar, um, that those extensive networks and service providers, they're in over 90% of Canadian communities. So this in and of itself just tells this message about how our two organization and others that we've grown to get to know over the past couple of years in the development of Parks for All, just you know, the, the power and potential that we have in terms of reaching Canadians where they live, work, and play. So we are a continuum of parks. I think um, in many ways we've been so used to working in our own areas of expertise and advancing particular initiatives within those areas of expertise, and that's extremely important and we need to continue that really good work. But we have really one network, is how we're starting to view this. We have one network. We're a continuum of parks, and we're comprised of a network of networks. It's complex, and all of these networks, they complement one another. And really what we're trying to do is to describe those interconnections and realize that those interconnections, they add value to our story, and it's in our shared story that Parks for All aims to ignite through a series of coordinated and complementary actions. Um, this is a really unique opportunity for us. It's a rare opportunity. The fact that we've been able to bring together so many people from across our incredibly beautiful and amazing country to start developing a shared vision about what our community of parks could look like and should look like in the future. So I guess I would just highlight uh, too before handing it back to Murray that um, our continuum of parks really, it, it is from as you walk out your front door and then you move through your front door, through your community, out onto like the borders of your, of, your, of your city if that's where you live, and you move through you know, regional systems and out into national systems and federal parks. Uh, our story is, is encapsulating all of that. Thanks, Dawn. So I'll hand it back to yeah. All right, here we go. So as Dawn has described, um, we, we saw nothing but opportunity over the last number of years as the Canadian Parks Council and the CPRA started to explore um, how, how we can better uh, work together uh, on such a wonderful opportunity. And uh, for those of you that are uh, familiar with the, the Connecting Canadians to Nature initiative under the CPC, or if you're familiar with the Framework for Recreation initiative uh, with the CPRA, uh, I'm sure you can all appreciate the, the, the challenges of, of bringing such a diverse uh, group of, 
uh, constituents um, from agencies across the country, from interests across the country. Um, in the case of developing, and I can speak on behalf of the CPRA's framework for recreation in Canada, but uh, uh, kudos go out to the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association in particular. Uh, for those of you that are CPRA members or have been following the Framework for Recreation in Canada initiative, uh, that project started in 2011. Uh, there was a, an event and a summit held in Lake Louise, Alberta that brought practitioners across Canada together to talk about a new vision of recreation in Canada. And over a four-year time frame, uh, the framework for recreation in Canada was developed in partnership with all of the uh, PT partners of the CPRA as well as many, many others. And uh, undoubtedly, the CPC and the development of the Connecting Canadians to Nature initiative uh, followed a, a somewhat similar path, uh, engaging the 13 FPT agencies that are responsible for parks across Canada to develop that document. So uh, with some momentum behind both the CPRA and CPC initiatives and looking at some uh, common ground. Uh, as Don indicated, uh, we started to collaborate on a project uh, uh, that we've described as the Canadian Park Summit. Uh, the Canadian Park Summit was an event that was held from April 11th to the 14th in 2015, last year, uh, 2016, sorry, and, um, and uh, that event was held in Canmore, and again, uh, the fantastic hosts of the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association helped us to assemble that summit. Uh, Dawn and I, amongst many, many volunteer efforts uh, from uh, numerous people across the nation, uh, put our heads together to develop a, uh, a summit event. And one of the key components of that summit event was the initiative that we're describing to you today in our webinar, which is called a Parks for All Workbook. Uh, we struck a National Advisory Committee in 2015. Um, that National Advisory Committee was comprised of members from across the nation uh, who have uh, expertise in, in the parks field or have interest in the park field. And uh, that National Advisory Committee uh, started to develop both the Park Summit uh, program as well as more so focused on the development of what we described as the Parks for All workbook. So I'll move to my next slide here just to give you a sense of the diversity of people that we engaged in the National Advisory Committee that helped facilitate the Parks for All workbook and initiative in 2016. Uh, there were a number of representatives that participated in the National Advisory Committee and through the network of both the CPC and the CPRA, we did our very best to engage a breadth of individuals and agencies that represent uh, Indigenous interests in Canada. Um, youth interest in Canada, non-governmental organization interests, as well as land trust, academics, and practitioners that are in the field of parks across the nation. And uh, the sampling that you see on the screen before you highlights the individuals who donated their time and their effort to the development of the Parks for All initiative. Once we got ourselves landed on a park summit event in Canmore, and uh, as I indicated through the, the tremendous effort of the Alberta Recreation and Parks Association, the CPC and the CPRA, the collaboration of those three organizations and partnerships that were struck involving NGOs and other uh, interested parties who sponsored the event, um, we managed to engage uh, a number of participants. Um, about 200 individuals were invited from across Canada representing uh, federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal governments. Uh, we also had representatives for uh, NPT um, associations across the nation, academic institutions. Um, we had allied relationships as well with uh, uh, other departments and organizations, health, education, municipal affairs. Uh, we also encouraged uh, uh, voluntary sector associations from trusts and elsewhere, and uh, we're quite proud of this fact that we also engaged some emerging leaders and youth from across the nation to participate, including the arts community, in the summit event. Uh, the summit itself was uh, an invitation-only event, and um, uh, because we were anticipating that we would have to roll up our sleeves and discuss um, the, the Parks Workbook, the Parks for All Workbook, um, it was very much uh, a working effort over the course of the summit event in Canmore. So uh, the workbook 
workbook itself was uh, prepared by uh, the National Advisory Committee, and we had tremendous assistance from uh, uh, some allied agencies, and in particular Parks Canada. I want to shout out to Parks Canada for the effort that they uh, undertook in, in providing some staff support time to the development of the Parks for All workbook. And the workbook itself, we intentionally described it as a workbook. Uh, we envisioned that the National uh, Park Summit, the Canadian Park Summit event, was going to be a first opportunity for uh, thought leaders, for emerging leaders and uh, individuals who perhaps hadn't even communicated with each other to gather into a, a forum where we could speak to the wonderful system of parks that we've got across the nation. Work it, work, the workbook itself described uh, some of the benefits and barriers to the existing system of parks that we've got. And for those of you that are interested in looking at the workbook, it is available on the Lynn website. And I would strongly encourage you to take a peek at uh, this workbook after today's webinar. And uh, it's available for download. You can get a sense of what was reviewed during the course of the Park Summit last April. Uh, it described, in very general terms, some proposed strategic directions for our parks community in Canada to explore. Uh, four of them we've highlighted today on this uh, slide. Uh, connect, conserve, collaborate, leadership, and sustainability were the four directions that we started to explore during the Park Summit event. And I'm really, really, really happy to hear and share with you that uh, not only did we have the information on the Parks Workbook, but we also had a number of commission papers that were shared amongst the delegates. And again, these commission papers are available for you to view on the Lynn website. These were intended to be thought-provoking papers to provide some background to participants in the Park Summit and to yourselves as uh, interested participants in the Park Summit initiative and in the Parks for All initiative. Uh, the commission papers themselves helped uh, to inform many of the delegates prior to the uh, attendance at the summit and helped us to set the stage for a fantastic set of dialogues that occurred. Over the course of three days, uh, we had presenters, we had workshop opportunities, we had facilitated work sessions amongst uh, table groups with a diverse audience of individuals. And again, very, very, very pleased uh, that uh, we were able to receive over 4,000 individual comments. Uh, we had a, a tremendous support from the academic community, in particular the University of Alberta, where a qualitative analysis of all of that feedback was conducted. Uh, Post-summit surveys were conducted, interviews with some individuals and agencies, as well as a follow-up with our National Advisory Committee. So after all of that work that concluded in April last year, uh, we had a lot of information assembled with a lot of thought-provoking information from uh, respondents and participants. But we knew we were only partway through our project, and we knew that this was really just the kickoff for uh, a much larger dialogue that we were hoping we would engage a broader audience of Canadians and uh, practitioners uh, and agencies across the nation in. So uh, as a result of the work that we did in 2016 at the Park Summit in Canmore, uh, we had some funding available that we quite purposefully set aside with the intent that we wanted to take our Parks for All initiative into the second draft. And uh, what we've done has, uh, is consulted uh, and, uh, and um, contracted a consulting firm, Sage Transitions. And uh, that consulting firm has helped us to facilitate uh, the development and drafting of draft number two of the Parks for All initiative. We re-engaged our National Advisory Committee. And uh, that National Advisory Committee has been uh, absolutely tremendous in their efforts to provide comments to review the information that was garnered during the Park Summit event. And uh, they provided us fantastic feedback on how we should retool draft number two of the Parks for All initiative. I'm also pleased to tell all the webinar participants that uh, not only have we engaged our NAC, our National Advisory Committee, but we've also engaged the Board of Directors for the CPRA. And through Dawn's uh, work with the Canadian Parks Council, Deputy ministers responsible for parks across the nation have been engaged in the Parks for All initiative and have had opportunities to provide some feedback to the initiative as we've developed draft number two. The final draft of draft number two is uh, currently being um, ready for publish publication. Uh, today's webinar is intended to be a kickoff to engaging a much broader audience, including all of you folks, the webinar participants, and your network 
in a review of Parks for All. So we will officially be kicking off uh, that opportunity for gathering input into draft number two of Parks for All starting next week on February 22nd, extending through to the end of March on the 31st of this year. Dawn, over to you. Excellent. Thanks, Murray. Um, it's been it's been quite a ride up until this point, and before getting into draft number two, because I know you're all very excited to hear a little bit more about that, I thought we would ask our first polling question. Um, Chris, if you're able to put that up, and we'll make this a little interactive. Um, the question we'd like to ask you, based on what you've heard so far, is had you heard of Parks for All prior to receiving the webinar notice? So that's just an interesting question that we'd start out. Um, and as you're contemplating that, we're going to be moving into the next part of our webinar right now. And I'm going to start highlighting for you what we're, we're hoping to achieve in the second draft. So, the, um, and that's interesting. The way that the results are showing up so far, isn't this cool how it's like live results? So about half of you had heard of Parks for All, the other half had not. That's very interesting. So we, um, I'm hoping that everybody on this webinar, as we move through this, you can start thinking about your own networks and ways that you may help us reach out to others to broaden, um, broaden this work. Um, and it has been purposefully, as Maria explained, focused on um, uh, you know, a per making sure that we have broad perspectives up until this point, but this next engagement period is to start reaching out more broadly into our um, greater parks community. So it's just so wonderful to have some people that are part of this webinar who have had experience with Parks for All to date and have heard about it, but also that we've got a new audience here as well. It's just fantastic. So through our work with the National Advisory Committee, this is what we heard. These bullets here that you're seeing on the slide, this is what we want Draft 2 to um, achieve. We want it to inspire action, create a sense of urgency, we want to galvanize the community. And I know I'm reading these off, but I, I feel like it's important to emphasize that these are objectives and goals that we're hoping to achieve through here. We want this docu document to be just and inclusive, inclusive of all perspectives, all who see themselves within the parks community in Canada. We need to define convergence. And by that, we need to understand and have it highlighted within our document just where we have um, complementarity across our system and where there are alignments. We want our document to not only meet what our local imperatives are um, in terms of health and well-being, recreation parks, those great benefits, but also international imperatives and the importance that Canada plays in, the, in, in global uh, field related to roles associated with conservation and this idea, what I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, the movement around nature for all. And we want this document to challenge the parks community to be the change. What is so unique about this strategic framework that we're building is the fact that it's not prescriptive. No individual or organization is going to be able to achieve all that is written within the strategic framework. Um, but together, we each play a role and we each have a certain um, a skill set, areas of expertise, and land bases, and um, through our cooperation and work together, we can choose from our menu of actions and uh, we are very excited about down the road. We want to report back from a Canadian perspective to hear what we've achieved and we'll get into that at the end. But um, right now, this is what I'm going to start rolling out a little bit, a highlight of what draft two uh, incorporates, but this is what we're wanting it to achieve. So draft number two, um, we have started it off uh, with a, a beautiful introduction which really does highlight the importance of this work and create a sense of urgency around it. It also defines who our community is um, and following that introduction together all the different perspectives that have worked so hard to build this second draft have come up with this vision. Um, and it may seem wordy, but every word is chosen very purposefully. Uh, and that it's an un, what we want to create is an unparalleled and ever-growing Canadian Parks and Protected Areas network that defines our country where Canadians live, learn, work, and play together 
to conserve nature, build relationships, promote collaboration, and celebrate diversity. Um, this is an ambitious vision. There's a lot to it. It's bold. Uh, at least that's what we're striving for, and this is where we're working into our um, engagement strategy coming up because we want to hear from everybody to see if that vision is something that um, you can see yourself in. Um, and it's a vision that you feel is going to push our agenda forward in a really positive and productive way. We've also identified four strategic directions. These strategic directions, um, I, I need to highlight, um, there's no particular order to them. They are all um, working together and they're, um, uh, they're interrelated. Uh, you can see that from the diagram that, you have, that you, uh, we have on this slide. And they're connect, conserve, collaborate, and right in the center together we're going to lead the way. So as I move into what uh, some of the specific priorities are underneath each of those strategic directions, I'd just like you to consider, I'm going to prompt you for the next question we're going to pose. Um, I'd like you to consider whether you or your organization would be able to develop an implementation strategy or take specific action that may support the Parks for All strategic directions. So that's the question I'm going to pose to you um, in a few slides ahead. But just think about this as we go through and uh, whether or not you see yourself in this. So connect. This strategic direction, um, it, it really does relate to the title of our document, Parks for All, Nature for All. It relates, uh, I know uh, a lot of people within the Canadian Parks and Recreation Association and the CPC identify with this one and along with all of our other NGO and academic and many other partners, land trusts as well. Um, we have three overarching priority areas and under each one there are some specific actions. And you can see the three priority areas there in front of you. So just as some examples, uh, just so you're uh, aware of what we're talking about, uh, we are talking about encouraging Canadians to learn how to connect with their parks and protected areas where they live, learn, work, play, and travel. We're also talking about actively creating opportunities for children and youth to establish a relationship with nature through experiential learning and in ways that are meaningful to them. We also want to enc encourage a diversity of visitors including urbanites, new Canadians, seniors, and others. As another example, we want to facilitate opportunities for youth to develop and share their stories and experiences. Um, I, I guess as I would say as you're listening to this webinar and the specificity that we have underneath each of these, you can see that the level that these actions have been written at are ones where you can further define those based on your own individual or organizational mandates. So this is where we're hoping that as we're speaking through this webinar that you're starting to be able to see what your contribution could be individually or organizationally to the work of Parks for All. So the next one is conserve. And under conserve, we've got a few other, a couple of other strategic priority areas, including acting on Canada's international commitment to conservation and helping ecosystems and species, including humans, adapt to climate change. We've got some other very specific um, sub-bullets underneath each of those. Uh, Canada is undertaking some work to work on our international commitments, and one of those commitments relate to um, a promise and goal that by 2020, we will our promise to protect at least 17% of Canada's land and fresh water and 10% of our oceans. Uh, additionally, we want to exercise leadership in the recovery of species at risk and conserving biological diversity. We want to support active conservation and restoration. We want to work with land, fresh water and marine users outside of the boundary of our parks and protected areas to help maintain ecosystem integrity and connectivity. There are a number of these different elements um, that will be provided in greater detail when you have the opportunity to read through Parks for All in detail next week when it's posted on the CPRA website. Third is collaborate that we have here. 
Um, and we've got a couple of others. This is one that I know is very near and dear to the hearts of Murray and I, just given um, the work that we've been doing together, and we see so much value in this, that uh, we want to streamline a nation-to-nation -nation partnership uh, to share knowledge, increase conservation opportunities, and acknowledge the shared goal and responsibility of appreciating and being part of nature. We also want, as, a, as another specific uh, example here, uh, to work through partnerships between Indigenous governments and public governments and work consistently to implement objectives that embody traditional Indigenous knowledge, responsibilities, and protocols of conservation while respecting Indigenous con constitutional rights. We want to work with individuals and organizations to increase access to parks and protected areas among Canadians without the means. These are really exciting actions, and they reach a number of different individuals and organizations across our community. We want to partner with public, private, and non-government organizations to champion parks and protected areas and their benefits. I think as you're listening to this, you can see that there's a broad amount of interest that can be reached through each of these strategic directions. And ultimately, all of us need to lead. We need to build the capacity and capability of current and future leaders. Uh, I've certainly really enjoyed working with young professionals over the years um, and hold this particular one near and dear to my heart as well. But we also want to establish practical, robust, and accessible um, nat a national database for sharing and supporting science and traditional Indigenous knowledge about parks and protected areas. And we want, really, to establish regular opportunities to gather the parks community to maintain and report on the momentum of the Parks for All strategic framework. So there are a number of different things that we have in here that we want to work towards. And I'll hand it over. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to prompt, if you can go back, Chris. <laughs> I'm going to prompt you to ask that uh, our second question, if you don't mind putting it up now. And that second question is, would you or your organization be able to develop an implementation strategy or take away specific actions that may support the parks for all strategic directions that are connect, conserve, collaborate, and lead? Well, this is very exciting. I can see through the live feed that 100% of you on the webinar today feel that there is some very specific way that you would be able to contribute to this body of work. OK, Marie, I'll hand it over to you. That's fantastic. Thanks, Dawn. So um, as, as we've described to you through the course of today's webinar, uh, I, I trust and I hope that most of you can appreciate that the, uh, the Parks for All initiative and the work that we've undertaken through the CPC and the CPRA and all of our partner organizations and agencies has, has been ongoing for the past three years. Uh, we're building on work that's been underway in Canada for over 200 years. And um, we think that uh, the park system in Canada is uh, second to none in internationally across this fantastic planet that we live on. And uh, as Dawn indicated, we think that in Canada here, we are demonstrating some leadership in terms of trying to engage all of our parks community in the broadest sense of the word uh, to, to develop a, a a platform for us to collaborate and to work towards uh, building an even better system of parks in Canada. So we are very, very interested in having uh, additional voices brought to the table, additional voices brought to developing the Parks for All initiative and the strategic framework that we're presenting to you today. Uh, so we do have a fairly robust engagement process that we're asking you and your network to get engaged with. Uh, as indicated throughout the course of today's webinar, we have a uh, we will be posting the information on the Lynn website, as well as the CPRA website in terms of engaging uh, the next stage of draft number two. If you're interested in some of the history of uh, the Parks for All initiative, the Parks Summit, that information is available on the Lynn website. But starting February 22nd at the CPRA website, you, we will be able to download and get engaged in terms of reviewing the draft number two of Parks for All. And we strongly encourage you and, and uh, are asking you to share that information with your networks because we're trying to gain as broad an audience as we can. We are really hopeful that we can have additional voices brought to the table. 
there will be an opportunity for uh, you or your agency, if you're interested, to facilitate an engagement session outside of the online survey and response opportunities that you've got via the CPRA website. And uh, that information would be available for you to develop uh, and facilitate an engagement session and to engage your own network to provide some feedback. And we would strongly applaud that kind of work happening across the nation from coast to coast to coast. Um, I also wanted to mention that, of course, for those of you that uh, uh, may already be aware of this, but there is a Canadian Parks Conference that is now scheduled and will be taking place in Banff, Alberta from March 8th to 11th. Uh, just in under three weeks from now. And uh, that Canadian Parks Conference is uh, a fantastic venue in which parks practitioners and agencies from across the nation will be gathering uh, to, get, to gain some uh, valuable sort of opportunities to collaborate and, and to, to, to share information amongst ourselves. There will be facilitated and um, uh, workshop sessions that will form a part of the Canadian Parks Conference from the 8th to the 11th in, in Banff. Um, both Don Carr and myself will be uh, available, and Don will be making some introductory comments at the outset of the conference. And so again, there'll be opportunities throughout the course of the next uh, six to seven weeks for all of you to get engaged. <coughs> following up from the Canadian Parks Conference and following up from the work that we're describing to you today in the webinar in terms of draft number two of the Parks for All uh, document, um, we anticipate that the uh, Parks for All document will come to a conclusion in terms of input opportunities at the end of March. Through the months of April and May, both the C Canadian Parks Council and the CPRA will develop a final version of the Parks for All strategic framework. Our intention is to uh, present that information back to our National Advisory Committee in May, and then uh, both the CPC and the CPRA will have opportunities for their executive boards to meet in June. We're hopeful that, uh, that the document will have become uh, the best it's going to be for 2017 and moving forward uh, and ready for endorsement and consideration by both the CPC and the CPRA boards in June of this year. Uh, our intent, of course, is then to finalize graphics and design to make that document available for print over the course of the summer of 2017 and then uh, the, the much larger task, if you will, involves uh, taking the Parks for All initiative and the document itself and circulating that amongst uh, political, organizational, and individuals across the nation looking for endorsements, which we anticipate will start as early as fall of 2017, part of Canada's sesquicentennial event. So I do have a question uh, sort of in our efforts to be interactive, and that question being, and I'll get Chris to post it here, uh, after listening to today's webinar, uh, our question for you would be, is Parks for All a strategic framework you or your organization would, be con would consider endorsing? And I, and I appreciate that for many of you on the call uh, from the outset, uh, suggested that 50% of you were new to the Parks for All initiative. But uh, we are trying to get a sense of whether or not we're, uh, we're developing a document that could be considered by organizations large and small across the nation to uh, endorse. And based on the responses I'm seeing to, so far, uh, we've got 100% of you saying, and that's uh, of 21 individuals on the, in the community that's listening on the webinar, that are willing to suggest that your organization would endorse. Fantastic. Uh, both Don and I can't thank you enough for uh, listening in on today's webinar. Of course, there's opportunities, as indicated by Vijna, uh, for questions to be posed. Uh, I can see that our poll continues to grow in terms of people saying that they're suggesting their organization would consider endorsing it, which is uh, music to our ears. This is fantastic news for us. Thank you so much, everybody. So I will move to the concluding slide. And then, uh, Vijna, I guess if there have been questions being posed by anybody in the chat box, uh, Don and I are happy to try and uh, uh, answer any of those questions. Great, Murray and Don. Thank you so much. Uh, it was just a tremendous uh, presentation. There is no doubt um, that there has been um, an a exceptional amount of work that has gone into this document and gone into the collaboration between 
CPRA, uh, CPC, and the entire uh, parks um, network across Canada. Um, and we are um, very proud and very happy to be able to uh, show this body of work at this time and to continue uh, to provide assistance uh, in the upcoming um, consultations for it. Um, while uh, you're typing in your questions uh, for Don and for Murray, uh, Chris has prompted our evaluation questions. We do appreciate your assistance um, and uh, providing feedback. CPRA does try to, um, as I had mentioned uh, from the outset, provide webinars that um, you know are helpful to the parks practitioner, to the recreation practitioner in Canada. Um, and uh, if you have any suggestions, we are happy to take those on. As uh, Don and uh, Murray have mentioned, uh, the consultation information will be posted on the CPRA website starting February 22nd. Um, and uh, we look forward to sharing that information with everyone. So I'm not sure if anyone has any questions at all. Um, we, we uh, look forward to answering any questions. We do have a few more minutes of time if, uh, if anyone has anything that they would like to say. So we have a question from Sean Ferguson. Um, he's asking, what are some strategies to engage with volunteer community groups uh, who are primarily not actively engaged with professionals in the field or government governing documents? Um, Murray or Don, do you have any comments on that? Murray, I may take a quick stab at this one and uh, allow you to follow up if I, if I may have missed a perspective you would like to share. Um, but I, I do think uh, some of the strategies are yet to be defined and need to be defined by conversation with those communities. I know in addition to the Canadian Parks Conference coming up in March, there's also a Heart of the Cities Conference which is taking place in Calgary just prior to the Canadian Parks Conference at the beginning of March. That conference is um, going to be represented by community parks uh, organizations, local volunteer groups. Uh, it's, very much, uh, it's very much sort of the groups that you're talking about, the community groups who prim primarily may not be involved with uh, organizations that I represent on the Canadian Parks Council. But we are going to be working to engage with those organizations to understand what the specific strategies could be that we could work on collaboratively together and individually. So I will be attending that conference at the onset to start making those connections and to start building those bridges and building involvement into the Parks for All program. Uh, Marie, would you like to add anything to that question? Thanks, Chris, for that yep. one. Yeah, no, no, thanks for the question, Chris. And, and yeah, Dawn, I, I, you know, beyond the work that Dawn's described, I know that um, as a local government employee and a representative in a community in the Okanagan Valley here in British Columbia, um, one of the things that uh, I've brought to the table in terms of acting as the co-chair of last year's summit and a partner with Dawn on the development of this uh, Parks for All uh, strategic framework document has been that exactly what you're, I think you're describing, uh, Chris, in, in that uh, uh, local community groups across this nation are involved in taking an interest. There, there are friends of groups with uh, small community parks, with wetlands, uh, with grassland areas, forested areas, etc. And we've done our very best to try and encourage uh, um, uh, municipalities, in particular, I guess, local governments, regional districts, uh, conservation authorities, to share with us their networks and broadcast the information around Parks for All. Um, exactly what Dawn described. As the network grows, as this, uh, as this initiative uh, morphs over the course of last year and then this year, uh, we anticipate that ideally we'd love to see uh, opportunities for more of these small community groups to get engaged and to see themselves in the Parks for All initiative. And we've tried to be quite careful about drafting the Parks for All initiative so that it does speak to those small communities, those small associations and agencies uh, that are working in the trenches, if you will, uh, right in our towns and uh, near urban and urban communities across the country. So thanks for the question, Chris. Thanks. We have another question from Erin, and perhaps um, Murray and Don can go into a little bit of detail. She's asking about uh, the resources um, that will be able to lead um, kind of municipal staff engagement through uh, draft two. So perhaps you could give us a sense of what we can expect to see on the the uh, February 22nd and the types of resources that will be available? 
Um, I, okay, I will. Uh, I'll jump in on that one there. Um, so, Vishna is is amazing with the CPRA, and so thankful that she's going to be hosting these materials. But I can say, on the website, the CPRA website, on February 22nd, uh, there is going to be a, a backgrounder that explains a little bit more detail about where the Parks for All initiative came from, a bit of its history, what you heard today. There's also going to be the Parks for All document itself, draft two. All these materials will be available in French and English. But I think what you're getting at is what's uh, unique and wonderful about this process too, is we're also going to be posting in, um, in both official languages a facilitation guide that any individuals that would like to lead their communities through a consultation process will have the specific questions um, that they can ask their, uh, their community in terms of what we need uh, to provide input into Parks for All. Uh, and it's a very guided process. So that will be available for download as well from the CPRA website. Um, and then uh, last, there will be a link to a survey. Um, so individuals and organizations uh, will be able to link to that survey to provide their input as well. Does that answer your, I hope that answers your question. Uh, Marie, do you have any more to add? Uh, no, I think that covers it off, Dawn. I just uh, brought up the draft facilitator's guide on my screen here in my office, and um, it's, uh, to answer the question even further, Aaron, it's anticipated to be about 45 minutes to 60 minutes in length in terms of conducting the, uh, the uh, exercise, in terms of engaging internally within your audience, and um, I, I think that uh, everything will be self-explanatory in terms of downloading that information off the CPRA website in one week. Perfect. I think that that uh, answered Aaron's question perfectly. Um, I don't know if there's any other questions out there, um, but I think our time is, is coming to an end. Um, so I would really like to thank Don and Murray for taking, uh, taking their time today to um, really guide us through this process um, and provide um, a lot of people with uh, the background on Parks for All and how this initiative came to be. So um, thank you, Don and Murray. You've, you've both done a tremendous amount of work, so um, you know we really appreciate it. And I would really like to thank Lynn again for uh, providing our technical help, and we'd like to thank the participants for taking time out of their day to join us and to um, um, make this uh, a great session all around. So if you should have any other questions, feel free to contact, um, contact us at CPRA, info at cpra.ca, um, or you could contact Murray and Don um, directly as well. I think there was a slide with their um, information on it. You can download the slides at the bottom of the screen as well um, and for future reference. And we will let everyone know once that um, recording is available. And um, I think that that is the conclusion. So thank you very much, everyone, again. And we uh, wish you a great rest of your day.